Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Mike Up Savage. I'm here today with Murph, and yet again, Nick is back with us. And today we're talking about the Rookie of the Year uh, for both NL and AL. First, we're going to go into the NL. We have out of the NL East, we have Alec Baum batting 338, four homers, 23 RBIs, 36 Ks in 44 games. Out of San Diego, Murph's second favorite team. Uh, Jake Cronenworth, he hit at the end of the year 285, four homers, 20 RBIs uh 49 hits in 55 54 games and then my opinion i think he should have won but we'll get to the next person uh devin williams 27 innings pitched uh 22 games four and one during that time one earned run over 27 innings i think he just should have won the uh reliever of the year award for the nl which i think did he or uh don't know honestly don't know uh yeah, I have no idea. Maybe, probably. I mean, I did suit so. He was probably one of the more dominant relievers be- on a historic pace if we play the full season. Yeah, similar to that like season where Zach Britton almost won the Cy Young um, yeah. with the Orioles. I mean, Cronenworth was pretty good, in my opinion. He hit 360 up to a certain point, and then he just kind of sagged off at the end of the year. But Devin Williams, man, that Brewers bullpen now, Hater and him. It's going to be pretty vicious. Oh, yeah. Pretty vicious one-two combo, right? Especially since Hayter give you two innings. I didn't watch much of Devin Williams, but I can assume he gives you at least two innings. So, there you go. You got four innings covered right there on a nightly basis, really. Yeah, going off that, I haven't really seen much on like much tape on Williams. But, I mean, we know what Hayter has. We've seen him go three in a postseason. So, I mean, if the starter can get to five – I mean, you're set. You even have a uh, Corey Knebel. I don't know how he did this year, but he's there too. So, I mean, your seven, eight, nine is covered. And if Hader could go two of those, it's like it's six or nine is covered. Just get get a quality start. You got Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff. I, those guys are capable. But Devin Williams, I mean, one earned run in 27 innings. That's insane. And then I honestly, I don't know if you've seen his changeup. But he, uh, I think nasty. he has the best changeup in baseball, in my opinion. Like, yeah, it's nasty. Nasty, nasty. But both, like, the two best hitters out of the rookies, this, in my opinion, this year overall were Cronenworth and Bohm. Like, I'm sorry, but Robert and the AL fell off and Lewis fell off at the end, but they just, those were the best guys this year um, in the shortened season. So Devin Williams takes a cake in the NL for the rookie of the year. Let's go head over to the AL. He got the Houston bum, uh, Christian Javier. This is apparently rookie of the year status, you know, five and two, 3.48, 21 earned in 12 games and 54 Ks. Uh, sorry, that's not going to win it for you. Um, Kyle Lewis, who ended up winning it, 262, 11 homers, 28 RBIs, 71 Ks. And then Luis Robert, 233, 11 homers, 31 RBIs, 73 Ks, and 47 hits. I mean, Kyle Lewis is a great defensive outfielder. I don't know if you've seen any tape on him, but he, he's – I think he's going to be really good. But, I mean, I think that's one of the lowest – lower averages uh, for a rookie of the year next to uh, – I mean, not – yeah. But Robert didn't really have that good of a year, in my opinion. I mean, he's going to be a phenom, but he just didn't have a full year to grow. Yeah, he started off pretty strong. I think, you, you know, the hype was really – that was there. You know, people comparing him, like, the next Mike Trout, in a sense, right? Like, all his, his teammates were hyping him up. Everyone's hyping him up. And he just kind of, like, really just fell off a cliff, right? His, his offensive production just wasn't where it needed to be, especially down the stretch of this White Sox team who was mm-hmm. making a playoff run. So, yeah, it, it sucks, you know. I think if he'd started off – he'd been strong like he started. I think he definitely would have won it by a landslide. I think Kyle Lewis, like you said, he's a phenomenal defender. I think he had the numbers midway through, but he just, for some reason, towards the end, they just both just started slagging off, and their offensive numbers really took a dip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going off that, I mean, it's tough to judge in a shortened season like that. You get a little sample of these guys. So, I mean, they could have just been a hot stretch for them. But, obviously, Lewis, we saw what he did at the end of 2019. I think he had some historic rate of home runs. Mm -hmm. I don't know, he just hit one every game in September in Seattle. And then um, Robert, obviously, he's got the the name, the prospect status. Oh, is he 
number one or two. One of that, obviously, yeah, you're gonna have yeah. four or two behind Lux. Yeah, you're gonna have a lot of lofty expectations, and I mean, he definitely performed to a reasonable standard. But like Merv said, he kind of sagged off. But in the end, White Sox broke their uh, postseason drought, so that's the, all that matters. Hey, hey, um. Before we go, Nick, I, I gotta ask you on the on the NL side. Are are you nervous for what the Phillies could be bringing up in their in their farm system? They've got some good guys. They got Bohm. Uh He has Harper to, to kind of you know counsel him. I, I want I want your take on, on the the Phillies core here, for all my Philly fans out there. Just you, DJ. Um, I mean, what Bohm is one. What other core do you have? They have some pretty nasty bullpen hands, some good starting pitching coming up, you know. Besides, okay, fine, just Bohm. What do you think of Bohm? Oh, Bohm Bo- is <laughs> like, good. <laughs> uh, no, Bohm's Bo- good, but, uh, I mean, obviously Harper will be there uh, playing him right, overpaid, but no, none of my business. But um, uh, hopefully JT won't be there anymore because, I mean, Steve Cohen – Getting the check. Nick, 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 rookie of the year video, man. Rookie of the year. Video. I'm just, you're talking about <laughs> the Philly score here. <laughs> this guy. But uh, I'll just, I'll just cut it off there. Boom, great player. I'm, I mean, he'll be a staple at third base for years to come, but we'll see if he can keep it up. And Murph, we got Robert. They locked him up long term. What do you think about the, the youth? in the outfield. You got Eloy and Robert in the outfield for the White Sox. Could we see a possible playoff run next year, if not deeper, hopefully, for them? Yeah, I could definitely see a playoff run, especially with the, the Indians looking like they're going to take a significant step back. You know, they got the pitching staff. That's not going to change, obviously, but it's just going to be a matter of now offense produced, right? And this year showed that their offense is going to struggle, especially now they're getting rid of the Lindor. So it'll be interesting to see what they can get back in a trade. I think the White Sox can absolutely take a step forward in this division and really, really pack a punch, especially, you know, with the help of Luis Robert. I hope uh, he takes a step forward next year and he can bounce, not really bounce back, but hopefully improve, you know, finish off the season strong. I think, uh, like I said, I think if he, he starts and finishes the way he did, I think he'll be a force to be reckoned with, an all-star for sure. Mm-hmm. There's some bright futures over there for the White Sox. I'd say that. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you all for coming today. Nick, thank you for your gracing us with your presence yet again. You know, I always have to thank you because you got to keep you on the show for as long as possible. You know, uh, you, you know, like the, the guest appearances are limited this year, you know, awesome. thank you all for watching <laughs> Nick. Love you. Have a good one. Everyone. Later.